and so up here we have this building face and going back to the cell morph. Um, so if you know what uh, a standard vector in C++ is, we use something called a small vector a lot when we need to have a, when we need to have a vector with a very like just a couple of things in it. A small vector has the space built into it, so we're not allocating memory all over the place, and that's something you're going to see in a lot of game developer code because memory allocations are like the hidden huge cost of uh, programming. And then we are going to say um, we're going to actually we don't need a structure for this. Do need a structure for um, and this is going to be something that's going to grow. But we need to define a type for this which is So just type defing a set of six small vectors as your adjacency list. Actually, let's let's make it a real type. And the reason I'm saying two is that it'll reserve space for at least two items w before we start uh, expanding beyond that um, because there's going to be a lot of things that where they have adjacency then they will you know this is a like the north face of this is adjacent to two cells because that's the where a discontinuity in the mesh is and this will be just to make it explicit on where that six came comes from so building faces have a count of six, and that's part of this enumeration that's up here. Building face. So back to here. Um, and we'll make that take an adjacency list as its output. And then, so here's our building morph and then building scale morph. We want to, we're going to use visual assist here and add an implementation of get adjacency. And it just adds all the bits for it for me because visual assist is awesome. One thing it doesn't do is put the override keyboard, keyword, which if you're working in C++, use the override keyword. It will save you so many stupid bugs in the future. And so now we have to go implement get adjacency for plain old building scale morph. That's just a morph that scales everything down so that the blocks are half a meter wide. And this is about the simplest thing you can do. Um, cell plus um,
and that'll just fill that out. No. I should probably go back and uh, give this a nice little constructor. Uh, the reason I'm making this little adjacency thing a structure is because I know that uh, before too long I'm going to want to add some more things to it than just this. Um, and so adjacency is going to be... like It's not just going to say what is the adjacent cell, it's going to say and what face of that cell so that when we go to like strip out you know faces that are touching uh, we know which face to take out from where uh, so and for good measure we'll just give it a default constructor that does nothing as soon as you make one constructor you have to make all the constructors So, um, <laughs> I get a cookie from Capicola. And final. Um, yeah, the reason that this is a parameter there is so that we're not constantly constructing and destructing it. We're just modifying it in place. Um, you know, the alternative would be to have adjacency list be the return type, and but when you get into querying the adjacency for every single cell in your building, you will that will just create a lot of stuff that should get inlined out but probably won't. Uh, yeah, and that's just one of those have been doing this for a lot of years I know what's going to be bad. So that's the very simplest to get adjacency function. Um, so uh, now we have to do the hard version of that which is the get adjacency for the cylinder. So going back over here, um, get to the building cylinder morph and using Visual Assist again to appreciate its awesomeness, um, implement get adjacency. And it's right there. And so, um, except for some reason it became private. Okay, Visual Assist is still better than not having it though, promise go back over here and start writing this. depend entirely on how many pointers are in your vector. And also, uh, just in general, a plain vector, I consider it a large, well, I consider it a heavy structure. Because um, you know, normally a vector is just a pointer to an array that's been allocated somewhere else, and so when you copy that, you make another memory allocation. Um, and that's again why we have a small vector, which keeps that keeps a small amount of memory internally to the structure, and does and that makes copying and things much quicker, but still not awesome. Visual Assist is a really nice tool that makes that just makes working with C++ and Visual Studio way faster and slicker. Yes, to the black speech of Mordor. <laughs> we are listening to a song in the black speech of Mordor.
Um, I added a bunch of shareware in my dorm room. Um, uh, the first thing in the game industry that people were paying me money to do was doing a PC to Mac port of Half-Life 1. Um, you know, back in 1999 or so. Uh, that didn't come out. Um, it wasn't my fault. But, uh, you know, that was, you know, we had it in beta and, uh, various political things happened and basically the decision was made that it was not a good business move to release that. Um, first, uh, first boxed PC game that wasn't a port was Myth 3. Myth with a TH, not M-Y-S-T. Um, Anyway, let's write get adjacency. Um, and we'll just start by... Clearing out all of those. And then... Z directions are really simple. Um, you know, the, because there's no warping of those. Actually, uh, one thing I should have done before any of this. Um, Just these cells don't even exist. The way we define the grid is that X is the radius and the Y is how far around the circle you are. So a radius of less than or a radius of less than zero just means no this this isn't even here. Um, so we just return out. Likewise that. Um, actually, uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, so. Uh, so cells for row is a function that just calculates over here how many cells you belong to a given row, and it always gives you back a power of two because that's um, yeah you know, we want it to always be we always want like when a row gets big enough we subdivide every cell into two so you don't have to worry about like all right these two you know there's 17 cells in this ring and 19 cells in this ring and they how do you line them all up and just keeping it so it's either it's always an you know divided by two or one to one is makes the building construction a lot easier on you know, users so going back from that um, actually we'll say this row um, <laughs> 